You might have seen in a previous video, but we had a bit of a swimming pool appearing inside the garage and we've got various damp problems in the house and came to the conclusion that this drain has been leaking for a long time, probably at least 20 years. And today we're going to replace it. Hiya folks, welcome back. Not the most pleasant job in the world, but this drain, this gully in the corner here, it used to have two rainwater downpipes going into it. And uh, yeah, it's leaking and it's been leaking into the property probably since uh, this porch was built. We'll get onto that in a minute. But at first I thought it was just coming down the back of the gully because uh, the back part of the gully that's supposed to catch the rainwater was completely cracked and smashed up. So I thought it was just water coming in through there but then I noticed there was still water leaking into the garage even when I removed all that and removed the downpipes. But when I poured water into here, into this gully, I noticed it was coming back out and you can just about see there's a crack all the way around this U-bend here. So unfortunately it's going to have to come out. And this has probably happened because the wonderful people who built this porch on the front of the house, as I say, probably 20 years or so ago, they've built the porch directly on top of the clay soil pipe, no protection for it whatsoever. I would have insisted that they moved this drain out the road. You don't build walls or, or anything like that directly on top of a, a clay soil pipe. And uh, yeah, and unfortunately it's just cracked and had movement over time. But yeah, had it been me, I would, I would have sorted the drains out at the time that we put this extension on, but such is life. So this all needs to be ripped out. I already had this trench from when the new water supply was put in, so I figured it's a good time to do this now while the trench is open. One of the things I do need is a couple of clear days with no rain because I need to concrete all this in once it's done and obviously we don't want the rain washing the fresh concrete away. So every time it rains this pit fills up with water. I've pumped all the water out for about the hundredth time. You can kind of see the route the drain's taking like diagonally under there and I've marked on the grass where it enters the inspection chamber over there. Not the best jobs to do in winter time because you really want some nice clear weather when you're doing a job like this so that your trenches and things don't fill up with water but I'm doing this in January, it needs to be done, needs sorted out as quickly as possible so that we can stop moisture getting into the house. I didn't realise at the time that this was going to be running underneath the porch and I've ended up putting the backfill and everything from this hole over here. So first job is I need to move all of this because I need to dig a trench along here. Let's uh, get started.
Right, that is me for today because rain is forecast for later on and I don't want to start digging this and doing all the work under here until we've got a couple of clear days of good weather and uh, so I'll start that tomorrow because there'll probably be a yet more bailing out of water to do tomorrow, we shall see. I've put a little bit of like hardcore and a bit of rubble down there just to try and soak up some of the water that just seems to like materialize in this but uh, anyway so before I show you the pipe let me just show you the mentality of well I could have saved myself a job if I'd done this in the first place but top tip for you when you are digging holes try and separate out your backfill as you go and you'll save yourself a world of pain later on so basically over here this is just stuff for the skip, it's absolute junk. Then over here we've got some turf ready to put back on this pristine lawn that we've got here. I've got big rocks and boulders and bricks and things over here. They're really handy for filling in a big area very quickly. I've got a pile of hardcore over here, so this is just like rubble. Really good for top layer, backfill directly under the concrete compacts down really well. Over here is all of the clay. It's got a bit of topsoil mixed in, but it's, this is mostly clay and this needs to dry out. So I'm going to cover it up with just some DPM, some spare plastic sheeting that I've got, and then hopefully that'll dry out. Don't let your clay backfill get soaking wet because it is a miserable job shoveling wet clay. Then over here, I've got a big pile of topsoil and then finally, talking of wet clay, this is what clay turns into when it gets really wet and it is literally borderline slip. You know, you could probably make plates out of that, but it is basically just mud. You can't use that to backfill. It's far too wet. Um, I doubt this will dry out in time to use it. So this will probably just end up going in the skip as well. You can't really use that for anything. That is 10 buckets of mud that I ended up fishing out of the uh, the hole the other day after heavy rain and by the way i've tried everything to stop this hole filling up with water but covering it i've put like plastic down and it still fills up i mean it's just seeping in through the soil at the end of the day so there's not a lot you can do you just ideally try and pick a dry day for doing this but what i've done today i have found the pipe not a bad guess there was my red line was the guess of where it was and do 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 and there it is there so the plan is i need to dig down a bit more here but i'll leave it at that for now again rain's forecast so there's no point going too deep at the minute but i'll do a nice neat cut there i don't want to cut on the joint so you can see the joint on the pipe there so i'll cut about there the rest of that pipe will become redundant so i can just kind of smash it out i might even bring the cut a little bit further down put a join on there it'll probably have to be a variable angle. I don't think I'm going to hit lucky because the route I'm going to take is this big thick red line here and then we'll head up that way to the gully. The reason I'm putting the joint here by the way and not here is because underneath here is a joint on the electric cable. If you remember from other videos there's an electric cable running all the way up here so I do need to be careful I should I should probably mark it again because a lot of the markings for that have gone away now so I will remark that just as a reminder but yeah I don't particularly want that joint directly above where the electric cable joint is and that way if there is ever a problem with this electric cable joint under here then they don't have to move the drainage pipes to to get into there they can come into it from the other side one other thing I completely forgot to mention as well is that I've also run some temporary downpipe because um, I don't want that hole filling up with water so I've got some very unusual routings of uh, downpipes at the minute but it'll do the job basically the downpipe from there will drain onto the top of this roof and then that roof will drain onto a new little junction I've put there and then that runs into just this temporary downpipe material I can't remember like elephant trunking or something I can't remember what it gets called temporary downpipe and that runs just over here just well away from the house and near this pile of bricks just to kind of make sure that it's as far away as possible 
from the holes so that the holes don't fill up with water as much. But anyway, that's enough for today. I'm going to cover the hole so that no one accidentally falls in it and uh, start the bulk of the work tomorrow. Right, just to show you the story so far. So we are coming from that drain and I've dug my trench. It took about an hour to get this dug. It's just roughly dug at the minute because until I get the pipe kind of laid in, it's hard to say how deep I need to go and work out the falls and all that kind of thing. What I've done, I've marked the pipe where I'm going to be cutting it. Have a look at this. It looks like a brand new pipe. It's amazing. 100 year old that pipe. So all I've done I've put a bit of tape around the pipe and then I've used a bit of, oh, it's still wet, but um, the tape will never stay on, but I'm going to be cutting basically everything that's red, I'm going to be cutting away. In fact, I might as well take that tape off now because the pipe's too wet for it to stick. So there we go. So that is my, my cut line. Everything on this side, I'll be keeping. And I think that should give a pretty good place for a join. So I'm going to cut this. Once that's cut I can basically smash this section out. We'll not need this bit anymore. So that can go away then. And once that's all cut and ready then I can remove the old gully, get this all cleared out, get the new gully roughly in, work out my falls because I probably need to take a bit more material out here but I'm not going to until I've worked out all the falls going down to there. And uh, yeah, that's the next bit.
So I've got the trenches all finished and I've got the drains all put in. I'll not show you that because it's relatively straightforward. And we've got the clay connector all the way to our new cut in over there. We've got an inspection chamber here. I was just going to put a bend, but I figured, you know, this is taking a little bit of an intricate route over to that drain and if there's ever any problems if we didn't have an inspection chamber here there would be literally no way of rodding into this pipe so i think it's probably a wise move and it means that we have got a spare connector down the bottom there which our builder can hook into for whatever he needs uh, later down the line in fact we've got two spare connectors we've got one there and we've got one below the surface, so a further down one, if you need a bit extra fall. So having options like that is very beneficial. You don't want to have to redo all of this later down the line. By complete coincidence, I think the drain cover is more or less at the correct height. I've only got one spacer underneath it, but I think that'll be probably absolutely fine. A couple of little things I wanted to show you here. So the gully, Everything kind of hinges on the height of the gully. So first of all, I've got the gully concreted in and it's all perfectly level. I've also made sure that I've got a fall towards the gully from basically everywhere. So I'm not particularly bothered what that fall is, but there's level. And if I let go, you can see we've got a definite fall from the concrete over here towards the gully. And you can visibly see there's a fall from that edge towards the gully as well, which is all grand. So we know that that's in the right place and ready to rock. For the fall on all of the soil pipes, 40 to one is the general standard that we use. So a little tip for you here, for every 40 centimeters along, we want a one centimeter drop. This is a 1.2 meter level. So I've just put three 10 mil spaces on the end there. And then I know when that's level, we've got a 40 to one drop. And just to show you on the pipe itself, I don't know if you can see that, but that's pretty much bob on. And I've checked the fall all the way around and we are good. I've also shoved a little bit of extra warning tape just on top of the gravel here, just in case anyone's digging up at a future date because we've got all sorts of things going on under here. We've got the electric cable coming along here and under here. We've got the water, the new water main coming in over there through that duct, which I've deliberately left exposed. I'm not covering that little bit in concrete just because if anyone comes along and digs this up later, they'll be able to see that and they'll have an instant kind of visual representation of where the water pipe goes into the house. I'm not going to knock out this bit of concrete here until I've backfilled this pipe because there's a major risk that when I knock this out it would damage the pipe obviously so I'll backfill, get some hardcore down, concrete it in. I am up against it time wise because at the minute the weather for tomorrow looks like this. Lovely weather today though, a bit cold so it might take a little bit longer for the concrete to go off but I think we should be fine. 
I'm not going to go into too much detail of the back filling, it's not rocket science, but basically I've got the gravel underneath the pipe, 10 mil gravel underneath the pipe, keeping it nice and secure and safe. I've then got nice powdery soft clay soil to go on top. I've already made sure that that hasn't got like rocks and nasty sharp things in, so that will be going on top. Obviously in the garden area I need to backfill with topsoil, which I've got over there and I've got the turf ready to go back on over there and then in the areas that are going to have concrete on I've got some just hardcore here that I can tamp down underneath ready for the concrete. I've probably bought way too much concrete but I'd rather have too much than too little and I'm going to need it for other projects anyway so don't run out of concrete halfway through the job top tip. Believe it or not this is just a temporary repair since when we do the porch extension at the front the gully is going to have to come out anyway so I've deliberately kept the concrete quite thin. My aim at the moment is to dry the house out not to create the most perfect gully in the world. That said I did fill the back of the wall with concrete just to discourage groundwater from seeping in above the footings but I'm not bothering with repointing above ground level since in a couple of months time this will all be internal anyway. But yes for the avoidance of any doubt the pointing is shot in this area. You shouldn't need a building regs application for something like this since it's classed as a repair rather than a whole new drain. That said if you're in any doubt speak to building control at your local council because they're normally very helpful. It should still follow regs regardless so do brush up on what's needed in your scenario. I'll include a link to the UK building regs in the description below. Also as a little present for future me I've covered all of the metalwork on the coupler in Greece. I've experienced what it's like to remove these after them being underground for a year or so. To Two minutes of extra work now will save a good couple of hours of buying a new connector later down the line. And finally, I struggled to find any information about this anywhere, so I thought I'd share my experiences. While the old pipe has a bigger outer diameter, it actually has a smaller inner diameter. As a result, if you align the pipes perfectly, you can end up with a bit of a ridge at the bottom of the pipe that things might end up getting caught on, leading to future blockages and whatnot. So what I tried to do was lift up the new pipe slightly so the ridge was more towards the top of the pipe. As I say, no idea if this is what you're supposed to do, but I figured if this ever gets used for anything beyond rainwater, which is very likely, then future me would thank me. Another thing worth pointing out here, in the UK there are generally two types of sewers. One for rainwater and one for everything else. Rainwater sewers generally outfall into a stream or river, foul water sewers head off to the treatment works. With this being quite an old house, everything is connected to the foul water sewer. The surface water sewer in the street is only used for the road gullies and the houses have no physical connection to it. That means rainwater and sewage all go through the same pipes. However, most houses these days are connected to separate sewers and you must check with your local water board if you're unsure about this. Don't connect rainwater gullies to the foul water sewer since that overloads the pipes in the street and you end up with sewers overflowing during heavy rain. Likewise, never connect foul water pipes to a surface water sewer since you just end up polluting local streams and rivers with raw sewage. You can be prosecuted for misconnection, so I can't emphasize enough the importance of getting this right. So, a couple of days have now passed and man, they weren't wrong about the weather. It has been raining a lot and I'm a little bit frightened to look under this because I had the most perfect finish ever on the concrete but I had to cover it up because of the imminent rain. Let's just see what's going on and, and see if this is actually dried. It should be all right, it's just, it's very, very cold. Water is running in there, a good sign, and that seems nice and solid, seems okay. I'm not gonna touch this inspection chamber, but, oh, our uh, temporary guttering has been guttering. <laughs> Look at this, oh God, it's about to burst. It must be blocked at the end. That's mad. Oh, it's just, it is trickling out. It's not, hmm, might be frozen at that end. I'm not sure, because it has been cold. I think what I'll do is I'll just empty that straight into the, the main manhole, because there's quite a lot of water there.
In the meantime, let's have a look under here. There's the old um, U-bend, by the way. I don't know if you can see that. But, uh, yeah, the U-bend itself was kind of fine. It was everything else that was broken. But uh, yeah, there we go. Got quite a bit of water around here, but I'm hoping once I remove this shuttering, that'll kind of disappear. Oh, look at that, neat. Yeah, we'll have ended up with a few little marks off the plastic. Look at that. This finish was perfect, but uh, such is life. It's only temporary because all of this is coming down soon anyway, but yeah, we've ended up with some marks off the plastic. But there's literally nothing we can do about that. It's winter time and uh, not the ideal time to be doing a repair like this, but the gully is working absolutely perfectly. We've now not got all these water issues of water building up inside the garage anymore and everything is doing as it should. My poor inspection chamber is covered in mud, but other than that, I think uh, considering the circumstances, I think that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. And the house is another stage further to being dry. Post any questions or comments down below as usual. Take care, folks. I shall see you next time. Tatty bye. Speaking.